If you're doing your house extension or doing some brickwork or masonry, you might have heard the words DPM and DPC. Now you must know by now, using fiendishly confusing jargon, driving all of us, the DIY and homeowner crazy, is what our friendly builders love to do to us. And a common jargon technique to be aware of using the super confusing style of abbreviations and acronyms, and even better when they can make those abbreviations seem really similar to each other. So with that in mind, let's introduce these dynamic and beautiful twins that continue the trend of confusing jargon, the large and lovely DPM and the small and cute DPC. Now, even if you figured you may know DPM stands for damp proof membrane, and even if you've deduced that DPC stands for damp proof course, what the heck is the difference between the two? They are so similar in both their shortened and their unshortened form. And this is the cunning of jargon to keep us poor novices in the dark. Think of a DPM or a damp proof membrane as a wide plastic sheet used to cover a wide area such as a new concrete floor or a solum. It might come in roll sizes of three meters wide. Visqueen is one of the well-known manufacturers and the sheet is smooth in texture and has a heavy gauge and that's a bigger thickness to you and I. Not flimsy and not like a poly bag. Its job is to stop moisture and damp coming up into the building through bits of structure that connect to the ground. The DPM sits over the footprint of the entire ground floor working together with insulation which usually sits above it and this DPM has nothing to do with the vapour barrier. The DPM's job is to prevent moisture and damp coming from outside to in, whereas the vapour barrier's job is to stop water vapour generated by our daily functions inside the building and getting trapped as it passes from inside to out and into the structure. Back to the DPM and then you've got your ground bearing reinforced slab poured on top of the DPM and a DPC on the other hand, that C for course, comes in much narrower stiff black plastic rolls and we use these rolls around openings such as windows to stop damp in our cavity walls and along the base of our timber frame where it sits on the masonry or concrete. These rolls are either 100 millimetre wide so the thickness of a brick or a timber frame can also be 140 millimetres usually for the ground floor masonry courses and running down vertical openings or it can be 300 millimetre wide for cavity trays and window sills and these DPC rolls are reinforced so not smooth like the DPM since as well as giving them greater flexibility without ripping they quite often need to provide a key for mortar whenever they sit on a brick course. Now a jargon buster video wouldn't be complete without a few tips to help us pretend to be experts when bragging about our DIY with our friends. Tip number one for the DPM, make sure to wrap up the membrane around its edges to create a kind of skirting which will increase its effectiveness and avoid any moisture transfer around the edges. It's always the edges and junctions that people get wrong when thinking about damp control and cold bridging. Tip number two, lay the DPM on a smooth compacted base. So if you've put a load of hardcore down to level out your site, Prior to laying your DPM down on top, you need to sprinkle a layer of sand down to about 50 millimetres, that's a couple of inches, and you can call this blinding sand, and this will protect the DPM from punctures as it is pressed against any sharp edges of the hard core. Tip number three, DPCs around windows and openings for the DPC always create stop ends along the horizontal damp course where it meets the vertical damp course. So the moisture running down vertically is collected by the stop end and directed to the outside face. One of the most common mistakes I see in masonry is whoever laid the bricks didn't take the time or sometimes they just didn't understand how to properly lap their DPC as they construct the opening. And that's why we always need to inspect stages before they get covered up and hidden. Human nature is just such that shortcuts do get taken when you're in a hurry and you also know that people might not notice it. Tip number four, if your DPC isn't 150mm above the ground floor and with weak poles above it to allow trap water to escape, whether you've got a solid concrete ground floor or a suspended floor, you need to start to worry because whoever built it didn't know what they were doing. The DPC needs to be bedded in before the next brick course or sole plate is added. 
Tip number five, you need cavity trays above your windows and always above your roof abutments. And you need weep holes above them at every second brick to allow trapped cavity moisture to escape. And don't forget to lap them over the vertical DPC from tip three. And the bonus tip, if your builder says, I've been doing this for years and that roof abutment doesn't need a cavity tree. It doesn't need vents. Like this dude here commenting in one of my other videos, Get them off your job immediately and run away from them. It's a classic cowboy statement alert from someone who has no intention of coming back at their own cost and repair the damage a year or two later as damp starts to appear inside your beautiful house extension. Tip number six, don't give more than five tips in a damp proofing video if you want lots of likes. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.